Today we're going to talk about electrolytes and what they have to do with solution concentration and ions in solution. So first, what is a non-electrolyte? We've talked about this before back in first semester, but when a substance is dissolved in water and it does not conduct electricity, it's a non-electrolyte. For example, if you have pure water and you could connect it to a power source, that would not produce electricity or conduct a current. And also, if you dissolve something like carbon dioxide in water, that would dissolve in water, but there would be no ions present. So a solution of carbon dioxide would not conduct electricity, so that would be a non-electrolyte. So what are electrolytes? Electrolytes are when substances dissolved in water conduct electricity. The reason they do that is because when the substance is dissolved, it produces ions, and those ions conduct electricity. So what types of substances are great electrolytes, or strong electrolytes as we call them? Things that are soluble salts. We have our solubility rules for that, and also strong acids. So for example, if we put hydrochloric acid, or NaCl, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, NaCl is a soluble salt, in water it would dissolve completely and produce a great number of ions and we see those in the drawing there and it produces negative ions and it also produces and it also produces positive ions and that would enable it to conduct electricity and thus would be an electrolyte so how does that have to do with solutions well in solutions there's different concentration of electrolytes for example if we have a solution of potassium chromate in potassium chromate, there's a 1 to 2 ratio of potassium ions to chromate ions. So it's important to realize that the, when we talk about molarity, which is moles of solute over liters of solution, the moles refer to the potassium ions and the chromate ions. And when you, if you know the molarity of the solution, the chromate would be half that of potassium. And the same tr is true if we're looking at a barium nitrate solution the nitrate concentration would be twice that of the barium concentration. And so if we looked at the balanced equation here when split into ions, the potassium ions are always greater than the chromate ions of a ratio of 2 to 1. And similarly, the nitrate ions are all always greater than the barium ions. So to see what happens here, we'd have to look at the solubility rules to see what happens. But we know the concentrations are related to the ratios we see in the formula. For example, if we have one molar, for example, if we have one molar potassium chromate, what would happen when that dissolved, there would actually be two molar potassium and one molar chromate. Because for every one potassium chromate, you get two potassium ions and one chromate ion. Similarly, if we had one molar barium nitrate, when that dissolved, we get one molar barium ions and two molar nitrate ions. And so we could take this and use this with any concentration. Let's say, for example, we had 3.0 uh, molar potassium chromate. That would mean the, the, the concentration of potassium would be times or twice as great. So that would be 6 molar potassium. And the uh, concentration of chromate would be, tw would be the same as the concentration of the solution. That would be 3 molar chromate. Similarly, if we triple the concentration of barium nitrate, we'd also triple the concentration of barium, but the concentration of nitrate would be twice that. So let's see if we can do some problems like this. Now the other thing to look at is when we look at the solvent forms, all we need to do is look at our solubility rules. For example, in this, we see that barium chromate is a solid that's produced. We know that from looking at the solubility rules because chromate is typically insoluble. But notice important things in this uh, balanced equation. For every one chromate here, we have one chromate, we have two potassium ions. So you want to draw particle representations that are representative of the formula that you've written. Similarly, notice there's one barium here, but for the one barium, we have two nitrate ions. So the ratios of the particles are equal to the molar concentration that we see in the formula. Now also, if you look at the products here, notice that there's two potassiums and two nitrates for every barium chromate. So here we have one barium chromate represented, and it was written on the bottom because it's a solid. But for that one barium chromate, we have two nitrates, and then we also have two potassiums. So there's a one to two ratio that exists there. Let's do a couple of questions. Now let's start with this one. Let's say we have iron, not iron three nitrate and potassium hydroxide. Now we see in the balanced equation they combine in a ratio of 1 to 3. 
there's a one to three ratio of iron three nitrate to potassium hydroxide. So if we want to have a perfect ratio where every single particle reacted, let's say we use one we use one molar iron three nitrate. Well, actually, the molarity of the nitrate would be three times that, and we see that represented in the drawing because we see where there's one iron. But for the one iron, we should have one, two, three nitrate ions. So there's a one to three ratio. Now, if we look at the potassium, now if we want this to actually react with the perfect ratio, we'd have to multiply this times three because we need to have three potassiums for every one uh, iron nitrate. So the molarity uh, that we're going to use here is three molar potassium hydroxide, which would give us three molar potassium and three molar hydroxide. And notice here we have, if you count the number of potassiums, there would be one, two, three potassiums, and then one, two, three hydroxides. Now notice that in the products, we also see this one to three ratio. Again, there's one iron three hydroxide, that's a solid, then for every one iron three hydroxide that's formed, there are three nitrates, one, two, three nitrates, and there's also three potassiums. So see if you can match the following substances to the drawings that would be appropriate. We have barium nitrate, potassium carbonate, sodium chloride, and magnesium sulfate. You can stop here, and then after you, after you match them, I'll show you which ones are correct. Okay, let's start with barium nitrate. Hopefully you recognize that barium is 2 plus and nitrate is 1 minus and they're a 2 to 1 ratio. So the best answer for that would be number 5 because the, the 2 plus would represent the barium and we see that there. And then the negative 1, there's twice as many, there's four of those, would be represented by the negative spheres. So for barium nitrate, the answer would be uh, number 4. Next one, potassium carbonate. We know potassium has a plus one charge and carbonate has a minus two charge. And there should be a two to one ratio. For every one uh, negative two, there should be two positive ones. And so we see this here with the third one. So this would be uh, letter three. Next, sodium chloride. This should be one of the simpler ones. Sodium's plus one, chloride's minus one. So you see this in this drawing right here. And so this would be represented by II. And last, what's left is magnesium sulfate. Magnesium is 2 plus. Sulfate is 2 minus. So that would be represented by the first one. Nice job. Let's do some more questions. Okay, for this one's a little bit more complicated. There's different parts. Uh, show how each of the following strong electrolytes dissolves to form solutions by drawing the particle pictures and provide the concentration of each ion. So I've done that concentrations for the first floor. So I've got 2 molar sodium bromide, 0.5 molar magnesium chloride, 1.5 molar aluminum nitrate, and 0.25 molar ammonium sulfate. So I'll go in order, and if you want to go ahead and draw all these and write the concentrations and stop the tape, you can pick back up and check all your answers. So let's start with sodium bromide. Sodium bromide, we know it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and you're, you should show the charges, and you should show, should show equal numbers of sodium and bromide ions, and we see that here. And the, next, we want to know the concentrations. If you know the concentration of sodium bromide is 2 molar, that means the concentration of sodium should also be 2 molar for, because for every one sodium bromide, you get one sodium. And the concentration of bromide should be exactly the same. So 2 molar sodium bromide produces 2 molar sodium and 2, two molar bromide ions. Let's go to the next one. B, 0.5 molar magnesium chloride drawing should look like this. We know when magnesium chloride splits up, you get one magnesium and two chloride. So in your drawing, for every magnesium drawn, and so here we've got three magnesiums drawn, there should be uh, twice as many chlorides. So if I have three magnesiums, there should be six chlorides. So we said the concentration of magnesium chloride was 0.5. The concentration of magnesium would also be 0.5. But the mag concentration of chloride ion would be double that, and there would be 1.0 molar chloride ions. So another example. Letter C. 1.5 molar aluminum nitrate. Now, aluminum nitrate dissolves in water and produces one aluminum ion. We see that right here. There's one aluminum ion and three nitrate ions. So your drawing should show that representation for every one aluminum. And we've got three aluminums here. One, two, three, 
there should be three times as many nitrates, so there should be nine nitrates. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got the perfect ratio. So what would be the concentration of aluminum ions? What would be the concentration of nitrate ions? Aluminum ions should be uh, 1.5, the same as aluminum nitrate, but the nitrate over should be three times greater, so that should be 4.5 molar nitrate. Let's do one more of these. The last one, 0.25 molar ammonium sulfate. We see ammonium sulfate splits down, and this gives us two ammonium ions and one sulfate ion. So the ratio should show, should show twice as many ammoniums as sulfate. So we see, so there should be six ammonium ions, and there are indeed six ammonium ions. So what's the concentration of each ion? The concentration of ammonium should be twice that of the concentration of the solution, because a one ammonium sulfate gives us two ammonium ions, so we want to double the concentration and get 0.5 molar ammonium ions. The sulfate concentration, however, should be exactly the same as the concentration of the solution. So a 0.25 molar solution of ammonium sulfate would produce a 0.25 molar mo uh, concentration of sulfate, and this should could say sulfate here. So let's take care of this. Four and then two minus. That's it.